Mga kay apat po kay Roman. Maganda gumawa po sa inyo lahat. Father Joseph Henson was whispering while I was being introduced. He said, uh, you are not from Guagua, you are from Betis. <laughs> yeah, Betis happens to be now part of Guagua. We lost our status as town in 1904, but we're very proud about being, being, coming from Betis, Pampanga. But it's okay, <laughs> we're really part of Guagua, Pampanga. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, it was not easy to say no to, <laughs> to the invitation of Dr. Luis Calindo. Uh, he's uh, uh, difficult to say no to. So, uh, well, I had to brush up on the document Amoris Leticia in between the sessions of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. To tell you frankly, para akong para akong isang studyante na kraming ng mabuti. <laughs> but thank you for pressuring me to really take the document very seriously. No. Um, the document, as so well said already by Father Maninting, is the synthesis, no? The synthesis of Pope Francis. Um, document is uh, not an encyclical. It is called a pastoral exhortation. It is a synthesis of the proceedings from the two synods on what is that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem with Bluetooth. Anybody can... <laughs> can be picked up, you know. Okay. Um, I think this is the first time ever in the history of the church that a pastoral exhortation was produced from two synods. Because usually it takes only one synod. It's a global consultation of bishops and fraternal delegates, but this one had to take two years, 2014 and 2015, uh, to produce. That means Pope Francis was dead serious about confronting head-on the issues that have to do with family and life. This is not about talking about the ideal. We know what is an ideal family. It's about magpakatotoo, confronting reality head-on. Aminin natin, parang ang gandang pag-usapan ng magandang pamilya Pero anong nangyayari sa mga pamilya natin? Dapat ba tayo mahiya na may mga problema tayo sa mga pamilya natin dahil malayong malayo tayo doon sa mga ideals, mga moral principles na binibigay ng simbahan? So Pope Francis only invited the Catholic Church to get real. Umupo tayo. 
magpakatuto tayo, mag-usap tayo, makinig tayo. That was his invitation. Well, very specific kasi itong topic natin. It has to do with the relevance of this document on Catholic schools. Medyo mas malaking hamon yun. I cannot just talk about the document. But I'd like to zero in on its relevance to the Catholic schools because you are an association of Catholic schools. Now, there are very specific paragraphs in this document that are talking about the relevance of Amoris Leticia to Catholic schools. In paragraph one, uh, 279, the document says Catholic schools play a vital role in assisting parents in their duty to raise their children. And they should be encouraged in their mission to help pupils grow into mature adults. That is easier said than done. What would that entail? To help pupils grow into mature adults. Well, the focus of most schools is really intellectual formation. But Amoris Leticia is calling the attention of Catholic schools to be a bit more holistic in the kind of formation that we offer to our students and include human and Christian formation or put the intellectual formation in the proper context of human and Christian formation because we're Catholic schools. Meaning to rear the students as authentic human beings and authentic Christians. Those are not two different things, by the way. Ang magpakatao at magpakakristyano ay hindi dalawang magkahiwalay o magkabukol na katotohanan. Dahil ang pagpapakakristyano ay pagpapakatao. Ayon sa halimbawa ni Kristo. He becomes our role model, our ideal, our image of the authentic human being. And that authenticity in our humanity is what the call to become sons and daughters of God is about. Because we tend to associate our humanity with being fallen creatures. We love to talk about original sin. I remember Father Joseph telling me after reading Original Blessing by Matthew Fox. He said, you know, sin is not original. We must remember that uh, it is the call to be image and likeness of God that's original. That's original blessing. We're called for a very sublime dignity to become image and likeness of God, mga anak ng Diyos. So, hindi na tayo kailangan maging parating apologetic about being human sapagkat kami tao lang na para bang napakasama ng ibig sabihin na maging tao. If we are true to the biblical tradition, dapat ipagmalaki natin ang ating pagiging tao. Tayo'y larawan ng Diyos. Ang tao, ang larawan ng pagkatao ngayon, ay hindi na yung bumagsak na Adan at Eva, kundi ang Panginoon Heso Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos na naging anak ng tao upang tayong mga anak ng tao maging mga anak ng Diyos. So, rearing in humanity and Christianity is rearing also in discipleship and mission, which is my basic summary of Christianity. It is important, says the document, that the students are able to view the world with the love of Jesus and can understand life as a call to serve, as a call to serve God, and I must add, as a call to serve the world. Because you cannot serve God 
and not be of service to the world. Specifically, Amoris Laetitia points out how Catholic schools can help form students in the Catholic principles of marriage, sexuality, and family life. But how to do that? That's the challenge. Like I said, I'd like to focus on very specific parts of this document. I cannot talk about the whole document. Um, you know, I think it will take you a whole week to uh, have a conference on every section of this document. Perhaps even a whole semester. It can be the basis for a whole course, by the way. So let me just zero in on paragraphs 279 to 286 of this document. The Second Vatican Council spoke of the need for a positive and prudent sex education to be imparted to children and adolescents as they grow older. Take note, a positive and prudent sex education. Meaning, to make sure that part of the holistic education of our students in our Catholic schools will include education in sexuality, which would include education in love, courtship, marriage, family, etc. Paragraph 280 poses a question. We may well ask ourselves if our educational institutions have taken up this challenge. So, right now, I'm inviting you, dear Catholic educators, administrators of schools, presidents, to please ask this question to yourself. How have you taken up this challenge? There is a context to this challenge. The document says it is not easy to approach the issue of sex education in an age when sexuality tends to be trivialized and impoverished. That's the context, especially in the age of social media, the age of digital technology. We all accept that educators cannot anymore continue to serve the role that they used to do or to used to assume for themselves. What do I mean? That the Ratian concept of educator, a provider of information, kung ganun pa rin ang mode ng education mo, you have become totally irrelevant in the day of digital technology. Because mas mabilis ang access ng mga kabataan sa information kesa sa rin ng mga professors. Kaya, you can no longer equate your role with providing information. I think much of our role has to do with processing information. The capacity to say, this is fake news. This is fake news. That means, that we develop your critical faculties to be able to discern between truth and falsehood. The problem is nowadays, young people are so exposed to so much information, they're not able to sift through them without proper guidance. That's where the role of educators must come in. In an age when sexuality tends to be commodified, when the human body is like an object of pleasure, we cannot rear our students properly in sexuality within that background. Sex education, says the document, can only be seen within the broader framework of an education for love, an education for mutual self-giving. Nice words, big words. Let's make them a bit more chewable. Education in such a way that the language of sexuality would not be sadly impoverished, but illuminated and enriched 
Okay, let's get to work then. It says, concretely, it means directing the sexual urge. And when you're dealing with young people, oh, you're dealing with people who are, you know, have sexual urge, and very often they wouldn't know how to deal with it. Direct the sexual urge through a process of growth in two things, self-knowledge and self-control. Because ang delikado ay yung self-knowledge na walang self-control. Delikado rin yung puro self-control, wala walang self-knowledge. It's the two together. Somehow they balance each other. Capable of nurturing valuable capacities for joy and for loving encounter. Take note, keyword yung encounter. Because our schools are places of encounter for young people. But the encounters must be joyful because sometimes the encounters are traumatic. Schools can also be venues for bullying. You know. So how can we make our school communities opportunities for joyful encounters? We must promote sex education that provides information while keeping in mind that children and young people have not yet attained full maturity. That's precisely why they are undergoing the educational process, because they need to mature. So how do we do it? It has to come at the proper time, says the document, and in, such, and in a way suited to their age. That means there is an age-appropriate sex education for every stage of life. I don't think it should be only for adults. I think there is an age-appropriate sex education for kids without having to, to say to them that they, uh, you know, uh, that they were delivered by a stork. Mga ganun dito, no? I mean, when, when families are too prudish about sexuality, parang, uh, alam nyo yung version yan sa kapampangan? Uh, pulot na kamo kayong taklan na mula. Let it say it in Tagalog. Sometimes, kids ask where, where they came from. And then parents, you know, say, napulot ka namin sa taing ng kalabaw. What would be an appropriate way to ask a question like that? Where do I come from? You know, how did I come about? These are opportunities. Well, the document says it is not helpful to overwhelm them with data without also helping them to develop a critical sense. You're not processing. Developing a critical sense in dealing with the onslaught of new ideas and suggestions. The flood of pornography and the overload of stimuli that can deform sexuality. That's the opposite of formation, deformation. You know? Instead of education, people can get miseducated by the onslaught of ideas, by the flood of pornography and the stimuli, overload of stimuli. That's why they need accompaniment. Young people, says the document, need to realize that they are bombarded by messages that are not beneficial for their growth towards maturity. They need to be discerning that everything that they get is useful, that every message is worth following. They should be helped to recognize and to seek out positive influences. Kasi, it's very common for parents to say, mag-iingat ka, ha? Don't talk to strangers. Diba? Don't talk to strangers. Wait a minute. Do you want to, your children to grow into asocial or antisocial beings? Of course not. Alam natin lahat ang ibig sabihin ng don't talk to strangers. Alam natin ang ibig sabihin ng BI yan, bad influence. But that doesn't mean you should not expose your kids anymore. And there is always a risk 
in every effort to expose your children to reality. So, they should be helped to recognize and seek out, to sort out, to, sh to, to sift between positive and negative influences while shunning the things that cripple their capacity for love. I like the way the document puts it. Cripple their capacity for love. And one of the expressions of, you know, being crippled in the capacity for love uh, would be the different forms of addiction that make people dependent. Uh, nowadays, we, we love to speak about, uh, you know, substance abuse as if that's the only form of addiction. It's only one of many expressions of addiction. Katulad ng ginagawa ng gobyerno ngayon, ng kanyang gyera sa droga. You know? It has to be challenged by educators. It has, it has to be challenged on the level of uh, science. Is it research-based, what you're talking about? I mean, listen, dear brothers and sisters, the educators, when you have somebody who says, addicts are not human. I expect educators to react to that because it is an assault on very fundamental things that we hold on to as Christian institutions, as educators. So, Smaryose, what do you mean addicts are not human? Addiction is a disease. May sakit sila. And then you say they're not human anymore? Bakit masyado ka nang nanonood ng zombie movies? Na para bang ang tingin eh, they're like monsters pag nakagat ka, magiging monster ka na rin. I mean, what is all this stupidity? All this myth? Criminals are irreformable. Ay, kaya namumulaklak ng mga, ng mga uh, prisoners, no? Ang ating mga jails. <laughs> Imagine the implication of this on families. Oh, I do not even know where to start with regard to the challenges to families in my own diocese. I have to deal with a lot of women who have been widowed by the drug war. A lot of children who have been orphaned. I did not even think that I would live to see the day when the literal biblical vocabulary for the poorest of the poor would come back. Because the original vocabulary for the poorest of the poor in the Bible are the widows and the orphans. Now it's back to widows and orphans. And a lot of parentless children, families that have become very dysfunctional because they're struggling, struggling with problems like this. Substance abuse, all forms of addiction. And Caloacan City, you know, uh, the district jail of Caloacan City has a maximum capacity of 200. Guess how many inmates it has? It has 2,650. Oh, the botas is even worse. The maximum capacity is supposed to be only 80. It has 1,800 now. <laughs> Imagine that, you know, in, in the situation so inhuman. So, when you have someone in jail, imagine the families. What happens to the families? What happens to their children? What happens to the wives? So I'm confronted every day by families in flight. Parang yung Sagrada Familia tumatakbo kasi hinahabol ni Herodes. And the murder of the innocents. Katatanggap ko lang ng text from one of the mothers. Um, kasi may bago na daw tukha. Yeah. Sabi niya, good day and po, Bishak. Kahapon po, may mga pumunta na naman pong mga tukhang dito sa amin, sa bahay ng dienan ko. Naka-uniform po sila. Tapos po, May recording po sila ngayon. Habang nagsasalita yung ginan ko, naka-record. Mga alas 4 po ng hapon. 
dinala nga po ng pulis yung gihinang ko. Sabi ng pulis, ito na daw po ang bagong tokhang. Kasi this is tokhang part 3 eh. Tokhang part 1 was suspended after the murder of Ching Ik Chu in Pampanga. You remember that, uh, well, he was not murdered in Pampanga. I think he was murdered in Pankram. Eh? That Korean businessman, when they realized that the Tokhang was being used by some scalawags in the police for uh, kidnap for ransom. Alam niyo kung saan kinrelate yung GEQ? Sa Kaluokan City. Sa aming sementeryo. But anyway, it's another story altogether. And then, nasuspend siya and then relaunch na naman. But this time, they call it Tokhang Reloaded Double Barreled. Abay talagang dumalang ang dugo dun sa amin. Almost every day. Double barrel na kasi. And uh, it was suspended again after the reaction of people to the murder of Kian de Los Santos and uh, that boy Carl Arnaiz, the teenagers. And then it was relaunched again and here is the third relaunching. So, so ito yung kinukwento nitong ali na nagtitext sa akin. Ang sabi niya, sinagot daw ng Bienan, sabi po ng Bienan ko, nagbago na po yung anak ko. Yung anak, eh yung asawa nito nagpitex. Ang sabi, nagbago na po yung anak ko sa tulong po ng kaparian. Sumama na po siya doon sa drug rehab program ng diocese at kalokan. Nagtatrabaho na po rin yung anak ko. Gusto po ng pulis na iharap yung asawa ko sa mga pulis. Bishop, tama po ba? Pupunta muna ako sa Human Rights Commission. Pwede po bang sabihin ko po muna yung nangyari sa amin kahapon? Baka kasi po, hindi nga pinatay yung asawa ko kahapon, pero tirahin naman po siya na riding in tandem. Because for the past few days, ang pumapatay, hindi naman yung police in a legitimate police operation. Well, recently ang pumapatay, mga bullet guns. What I simply call them dead squads. Naglipa na ito sa amin. And they're killing the same people. Imagine, you know, imagine the effect of this on, on families. Anyway, let me continue. We also must realize, the document says, that a new and more appropriate language is needed in introducing children and adolescents to the topic of sexuality. A sexual education that fosters a healthy sense of modesty. And I like how the word modesty is being reintroduced by the document, not in the sense of prudishness, because aminin natin kung minsan we associate modesty with prudishness, which is also negative. Yung mga prudish na wala ka nang masabing any, anything sexual, no? para bang tabu tabu na pag-usapan lahat ng may kinalaman sa sexualidad. Ang sabi niya, nowadays modesty, unfortunately, is considered as a relic of a bygone era. And modesty has to do with many things. With thinking, with speech, with the way you dress up, the way you comport yourself. Modesty, says the document, is a natural means whereby we defend our personal privacy and prevent ourselves from turning or being turned into objects to be used. Because the opposite of it, the loss of modesty, is the capitulation. It's like you unwittingly are allowing yourself to be turned into an object to be used. So, what is the purpose of sex education. Dito tayo medyo hindi nagkakaintindihan madalas sa gobyerno. Why sex education? Nowadays, the concept of sex education tends to be linked or associated with protection. I-educate ang kabataan para matuto silang gumamit ng condom para patuto sila ng safe sex. 
to practice safe sex para ma-prevent ang teen pregnancies. That's the common uh, objective. And we do not agree with that. Without having to say, ayaw natin ng sex education. Of course, gusto na. Please never give that impression that the Catholic Church doesn't want sex education. The document, in fact, is telling Catholic universities to make sure that we succeed in putting up age-appropriate education in sexuality. But if we teach sex education that way, it conveys a negative attitude towards the natural procreative finality of sexuality. Na para bang, na para bang yung pagbubuntis ay disease. You have to protect yourself. You have to be safe. Ganon tipo. As if an eventual child were an enemy to be protected against. Kapag nireinforce natin ang ganoong attitude, magiging ganyan din ang kanilang pagtingin sa seksualidad. It's a way of thinking that promotes narcissism. Parang okay pala yun magpasarap sa sexuality uh, ng walang sabi. Parang ganun yung attitude pa. Walang sabi. So, you can be aggressive as long as you protect yourself. It is irresponsible, says the document, to invite adolescents to toy with their bodies and their desires as if they possess the maturity, values, mutual commitment, and goals proper to marriage. Sino ang biktima at the end of the day? Sila rin. It reinforces a tendency to use other persons as means of fulfilling their needs or limitations. Na parang ang seksualidad ay gamitan. I like you, do you like me? Let's do it. You know, we love to play a joke on the kapampangan uh, kakuka. Uh, in kapampangan, to say, you are mine, you say, kakuka. But if you invert it and, and you express your disposition or desire to give yourself in love to the other, you say, Ken Kaku. Kaku ka, ke Kaku. Parang masyado malapit yan. No? We tend to confuse them. Itong dalawa. Kaku ka is, ayan, narcissistic. I like you, you belong to me. I can possess you. Is that what love is about? In Christian tradition, we always relate love to self-giving. It's not about saying kaku ka, but about being able to say ke kaku, I am yours. What matters is to teach them sensitivity to different expressions of love mutual concern and care, loving respect, and deeply meaningful communication. Napakahalaga ng word, communication. Kaya nga yung intercourse. Ang gandang salita niyan. It means dialogue. It means communication. Parang pag pinag-usapan ka agad yung koitus, yun na siya. <laughs> Parang walang communication ba? Uh, parang two people desire self-gratification. Yun ba yun? That they are prepared for an integral and generous gift of self that will be expressed following a public commitment in the gift of their bodies. And incidentally, you know, John Paul II made a very important contribution in his theology of the body. And it can go very well with our uh, education on sexuality. That they are oriented to sexual union in marriage as a sign of an all-inclusive commitment. Ayan yung word na kuminsan pilit inaalis sa word love. Eh. You see, yan ang problema sa English language. It's such an impoverished word. Impoverished language, no? Parang they use love for everything. 
you know, you, you say, I love you to your spouse, and you can use the same word for, I love this dessert. I love the color of your hair. Yeah. Parang, kaya, yung, ano bang ibig sabihin when you say love? The all-inclusive commitment is the very foundation of it. Uh, I know that in Holy Angel University, Sing Sing is uh, associated with uh, heritage. No? Ang mana, ang Sing Sing kung mana. But did you know here in Pampanga, a most popular native Kapampangan song is Atin Kubong Sing Sing. And I used to wonder why, why, uh, what the big deal was about having a ring. Because the song says, Meron akong sing sing, isa itong kayamanan, naman ako ito sa aking mga magulang. Minsan, itinago ko ito, kunyari, itinago ko. Nung itinago ko, tsaka siya nawala. Sa kanteng sininot king meto nga kaban, may wala yung iti, eh mukha malaya. Kung kailan ko tinago, tsaka nawala ito na hindi ko namamalaya. Because the ring is symbolic of commitments. Kapag nagtago ng sing-sing ang isang lalaking may asawa, anong ibig niyang gawin? Huwag mo itago yan. That's your treasure. You know? Yan ang nagpapataas ng dangal ng iyong pagkatao. Marunong kang umibig, magmahal, at magtalaga ng buhay. Pumasok sa isang pananagutan. Kaya pag nawala ang sing-sing mo, ingsukal ng loob ko, susundol king balwa. Kaya magkakalat ka sa kapampaka sa sukal loob, yung sama ng loob. No? Uh, the word means basura. para magkakalat ka kapag nawalan ka ng pananagutan sa buhay. When you lose your commitments, your sense of commitment, you make a mess of life. So, Ang sabi niya, may murus kong gamat babo ng lamesa. Meaning, nagdasal ako sa babo ng mesa. At humingi ng tulong. Sino mang makatulong sa akin na matagpuan kong muli ang nawawala kong sing-sing. Ang kawawang puso ko yung nagsusumahan sa kanya. Help yourself if you if you lose your name. Pag nawala ang sing-sing mo, don't just cry about it. Commitment. To help young people so that they don't confuse two levels of reality, says the document, sexual attraction on the one hand and union on the other hand. Quoting from Eric Fromm, well, it's a pretty old document, a pretty old book, anyway, and sabi niya, sexual attraction creates, for the moment, the illusion of union. Yet without love, this union leaves strangers as far apart as they were before. Attraction is not to be equated with union. The illusion of union without love, ang sabi niya, only alienates, it only alienates the, the partners as far apart as they were from uh, before. The language of the body calls for patient apprenticeship. Kaya napakahalaga din ng ng gabay ng magulang. Imagine, you know, yung ano uunawain ng bata, ng isang batang, kabataang lalaki, ang, ang kanyang wet dreams. Kung di niya ito may kwento sa isang more mature uh, male, ano uunawain ng isang kabataang babae niriregla na o nagsisimula na na mag-menstruation? kung walang aatay sa kanya, kung sasabihin, basmaya, magpag-usapan niya. Di ba? I mean, that's not Christian. That kind of prudishness. But how do we talk about it with modesty? The language of the body. It calls for apprenticeship in learning to interpret the ch and channel desires in view of authentic self-giving. When we presume to give everything all at once, it may well be that we give nothing. Kaya, sana part of 
education and sexuality for young people is love waits. That love can wait. What are you giving? Parang binigay mo lahat, you realize eventually, wala kang binigay. It is one thing to understand how fragile and bewildered young people can be. And very often, it's a common justification for the stupid things that sometimes they do. Eh, mga bata yan eh. Eh, mga confused yan eh. Well, sabi ng document, it's one thing to understand that and another thing entirely to encourage them to prolong their immaturity in the way they show love. Kaya, the apprenticeship is so important. But then, the challenge is the document, but who speaks of these things today? Who is capable of taking young people seriously? Kung ang attitude natin, masyadong patronizing, mga bata pa kayo, ganyan, huwag kayong sasabat sa usap matatanda. If we cannot take young people seriously, do not expect them to mature the way you want them to. Who helps them to prepare seriously for a great and generous love? These are very important questions being posed to us by the document. Where sex education is concerned, very much is at stake. In paragraph 284, it should also include respect and appreciation for differences as a way of helping the young to overcome their self-absorption. Alam nyo, ito yung kultura na kinikreate ng the culture of the selfies. Eh. You know the kind of people that I avoid in the social media? Kapag tumanggap ako ng friend request sa Facebook, bubuksan ko yung page niya. Kapag punong-puno ng selfie yung page niya, oh my God, I have to avoid that person. <laughs> That person is not really interested in friendship. Kasi nakatutok sa sarili. Ayan. Ayan yung kultura na pinopromote ko ngayon. Self-absorption. Ang ganda-ganda ko. Ito ang kinakain ko. Ito ang lugar na pinuntahan ko. Everything is about me. The opposite of that is to be open and accepting of others. Kaya nga siya, communication, dialogue, intercourse. Quoting from Laudato Si, the document says, thinking that we enjoy absolute power over our own bodies often turns into thinking that we enjoy absolute power over creation. You'd be amazed, you know, when you read the book of Genesis in the story of the sin of Adam and Eve. After they are banished from the Garden of Eden, the Lord says, Cursed be the ground because of you. Meaning, may implication sa kalikasan ang kanilang behavior. It's not just about the two of them. It's not just about their bodies. And now, we translate that power over our bodies into power over everything else in creation. An appreciation of our body as male or female is also necessary for our own self-awareness in an encounter with others different from ourselves. Kung nasa hanggang selfie culture ka lang, anyone different from you is ugly and you don't care. In this way, we can joyfully accept the specific gifts of another man or woman, the work of God, the Creator, and find mutual enrichment. Therefore, a man shall leave father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall be as one. And I love the way the book of Genesis portrays the creation of man. Hinugutan ng tadyang. Ibig sabihin, binawasan. Binawasan ka. Mula ngayon, hindi ka na kumpleto. Ang ganda ng story of creation, ha? It's isang palaisipan. Sa paglikha ng Diyos na katuwang sa tao, binawasan muna siya. 
Kasi kung tingin mo, buo ka na, ganat na, lahat na sa'yo na, hindi ka na mga ngailangan ng kakwa. A man shall leave father and, ha- and mother and cling to his wife. Di ba parang maliktad, no? Ang common notion natin is the woman who must leave father and mother and cling to the husband. Pero, I like it. But the biblical tradition is suggesting kulang ang iyong pagkatao, lalaki. Kaya hanapin mo ang ikapupuno ng buhay mo. Ang mutual enrichment. Only by losing the fear of being different can we be free of self-centeredness and self-absorption. Yan yung the, the disease of narcissism. Sex education should help young people to accept their own values. To avoid the pretension to cancel out sexual difference because one no longer knows how to deal with it. That's the common tendency of secular culture nowadays. Para bang, because, because we do not know how to deal with difference, we, we just cancel it out. Para bang everything is the same. Our being male or female is not simply the result of biological or genetic factors. Ah, this is a new idea, no? Hindi na siya, wala na siya dun lang sa mode na yun. Kung minsan kasi akala rin na pa-Jurassic ng thinking ng Catholic Church about sexuality. Nang ating gender hanggang dun lang tayo talaga sa biological male or female or masculine feminine. Hey, look at this, this paragraph. Sabi niya, multiple elements, multiple elements are involved. Not just biological or genetic factors. Elements that have to do with temperament, family history, culture, experience, education, the influence of friends, family members, and respected persons, as well as other formative situations. Lahat pala yan, they factor in the shaping of masculinity and femininity. True. Okay, masculinity and femininity are given facts in creation. Totoo naman yan eh. Either may matris ka o wala. Parang gano'n ba? Biologically. Pero, it doesn't all boil down to that. Yes, it is true, the masculinity and femininity are beyond our own decision. But it is equally true that they are not rigid categories. Says the document. Paragraph 286, very important. A husband's mas- masculinity can be flexibly adapted to the wife's work schedule. Anong mangyayari sa pamilya kung sasabihin ng lalaki, kalalaki kong tao, aasahan mo kung magpapalit ng diet pero sa anak mo? Anak din naman yan. Kalalaki kong tao, aasahan mo maglalaba ako? Eh kung sabihin ng babae, kababae kong tao kung mag-a-abroad sa Hong Kong para kumita? We can we not accommodate each other within the circumstances? Masculinity is not diminished by taking on domestic chores or some aspects of raising children. This has become a very common phenomenon, especially in the Philippines, the context of OFW parents. Imagine the struggle of families to keep together. Kung minsan akala natin ang problema lang separation, divorce. Ako, dito sa Pilipinas, people are separated not because they hate each other. They're separated geographically because of the force of circumstances. Ilan sa mga estudyante nyo, anong porsyento ng mga estudyante dito sa Holy Angel University ang anak ng mga OFWs? You'd be surprised. 25%. Look at that. You'd be surprised. Part of sex education is to help children accept as normal such healthy exchanges that do not diminish the dignity of the father figure. Bababang tingin ko sa tatay ko dahil nag-ayos siya ng bulaklak. Bababang tingin ko sa tatay ko dahil siya ang nagwalis sinbes ng nanay ko. You get my point? 
a rigid approach turns into an over-accentuation of the masculine or feminine and does not help children and young people to appreciate the genuine reciprocity incarnate in the real conditions of matrimony. Something beautiful, in fact, comes out. Yung mga macho, nagiging feminine yan pag nangliligaw. Yeah. Because all the gentleness and the caring, huwag dadala ng bulaklak, aamuyin din yan yung bulaklak, and all the gentleness and care. Something beautiful happens in the encounter. Yeah. And does not help yung, yung, yung genuine reciprocity that's incarnate sa matrimony. The rigidity can hinder the development of an individual's abilities to the point of leading him or her to think, for example, that it is not masculine to cultivate art or dance. So, yung mga caricaturing, compartmentalizing, pambabae ito, panlalaki ito, gano'n, no? Or not feminine to exercise leadership. Mahihirapan tayo kapag, you know, we follow that kind of rigid caricature of the masculine and feminine. The word is reciprocity. We're not even talking about women's sleep here or anything like that, burn the ground. No, no, reciprocity. Well, thank God, says the document, this has changed. Ewan ko lang kung this has fully changed in the Filipino culture. <laughs> Kasi malakas pa rin itong tendency na to. But in some places, deficient notions still condition the legitimate freedom and hamper the authentic development of children's specific identity and potential. Yung sabi ng document. Opportunities for education in identity, sexuality, love, friendship, courtship, parent-child relationship, marriage, etc. These are what we create, hopefully, with what we are able to create in the university or in the Catholic school setting, if we are serious about educating them in sexuality. Well, that's my last slide. The most difficult part of what you expected of me was the last part, the implications for nation building. Perhaps for that I will just say a strong family must lead to a stronger nation. If we're not that strong as a nation, perhaps our families are not as strong as we believe them to be. There are too many challenges that our families in the Philippines nowadays are facing. And for the life of me, I cannot understand in the context of what's happening today, in the context of the drug war that has become very, very, very cruel. I don't mean sword when I talk about the drug war. They, they, they've asked me about the relaunching of the Tokhan. And my reaction was, good heavens, you have barely washed the blood, the blood that flow from Tokhang part one and two. You barely accounted for the lives and you wouldn't even accept one single case as extrajudicial killing. And then you relaunch it again? Let's not fool each other. You never unlaunched it. And what is, now, what is this now doing to our families? I put up a little center for street children in San Roque Cathedral because children are now like stray dogs and cats. What can you do if the parents are in jail or if the parents are victims of Toha? What can you do? What will the children do? On my Facebook account, I posted the picture of one little boy whose name was Moy Moy. He was begging along Mabini Street in Kaloocan City. You know what the neighbors call him? Tatay Moy Moy. Because he was playing the tatay role in the family. 
he had three other younger uh, siblings to take care of. The father, he, he, was, uh, he was in jail for a long time until he was finally released. And when he was released, Moy Moy was saying, Sana doon na lang muna siya. Kasi hihingi pa siya sa mga napalimus ko. And the mother has lost her sanity. Because she's a battered woman. You have an example of a very dysfunctional family. The only one who is really expressing some care and compassion is the Lola. But the Lola is living in another place. So it's really moy moy who is playing the father uh, figure. And now he has a very acute uh, disease of the liver and his days are under. This is what is happening to a lot of poor Filipino families. That is why I made it a point in Kaloopan to change pastoral strategies because I have only 27 parishes for you know, around 1.6 million Catholics. Imagine that. No? Only 27 parishes. I have only 30 incarnated priests. Tapos, hindi pa ako makapagtayo ng parokya kasi wala namang lupa. Napaka-strict pa ng kanon do about how to put up a parish. Meron isang, paro- Meron isang exclusive subdivision there, by the way, you know. They offered their chapel para gawin kong parokya. Nag-ocular ako, tinignan ko, sabi ko, hey, very nice, very nice. Sabi ko, sige, sige, we can make this, this chapel into a parish. Pero I will define the jurisdiction, ha? Sabi ko, kasi you're surrounded by informal settler communities, A, B, and C. So, pwede bang isama ko sa parokya ninyo? Sabi na, anong ibig nyo sabihin? Magsisintuan sila sa amin? Sabi ko, of course, kung parokya kayo. Ay, sorry ho. Kailangan ma-approve mo na yan ng Homeowners Association. It was never approved. They want the parish but only for themselves. The great divide. Ayan ang problema. Kaya, families are worlds apart. Kung minsan napaka-inane ng mga concerns na pinag-uusapan sa pamilya ng ibang tao, when you realize most other families are on basic survival mode. We talk about nation building. We have family. Not to now, oh, how big is the percentage of homeless people? People still living along the esteros, informal settlers. It's how can you build family without the proper ambiance of the home? Is, are you surprised when there are sexual abuse cases within families? When you hear about fathers abusing their daughters? You, you know, if you get to visit their homes, you will not be surprised. I mean, you live in such a small space na dikit-dikit kakasama na tutuloy. Yun na lahat. Yun na lahat. Uuwing lasing ang ama. Nagsyabu pa. So what do you expect? You know? Big challenge, big challenge. So I leave that open to you, the part about, you know, the implications for nation building of building stronger Filipino families through proper education and your involvement as Catholic schools in this endeavor. Hanggang doon na lang po muna, maraming salamat po sa'yo.